Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught, and I will be the host today. And today I am joined by Adara Ekpo. Adara, how are you? So nice uh -uh. to have you on the show. I'm so excited. I'm doing well. How are you this morning? I'm doing great, and uh, I'm very excited to learn from you today because we have some exciting Lightroom features coming up, right? Yes, we um, do. Yes, we do. Yes, yes. so, so exciting. Um, I know Adobe has just released some very new things across all their programs, so we're going to focus on Lightroom today. But first, I just want to give everyone a warm welcome in the chat. And those of you watching on Behance and YouTube, don't forget, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, already, please be do, please be do, <laughs> please be sure to do so, so that you can join in on all of our fun and keep up to date with the latest streams. Um, and then real quick, don't forget to start your day with the Photoshop Creative Challenge hosted by Sam Peterson every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. You can tune in and challenge yourself with a, each, with a new prompt each and every day. So without further ado, Adara, I want to just hop over to you and let you share a little intro about yourself and uh, talk about what we're going to be working on today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anna. So hey, everyone. My name is Adara. I am a portrait photographer currently based in Phoenix, Arizona. I have been shooting for probably seven, close to seven years. It'll be seven years in January. Um, and I really just focus on portraiture and creating cinematic and just beautiful studying portraits. I really love color. Um, and so it's really important for me to bring color as much as I can into my images. And um, just really, especially I, I tend to focus a lot on darker complexions, brown complexions, black complexions, just because I feel like that was an area that I felt like a lot of photographers um, growing up in my specific space, especially when I went to college, they were lacking in skill set in that space. So I really focus on making sure that people that look like me feel beautiful. Um, and obviously I do that for everyone, but you'll see here that this is kind of like the focus of a lot of my work. And so um, today I'm really excited because of course we have a lot of new Lightroom features and we're actually gonna be focusing on there we go. This photo set that I just did, um, I just shot these photos about maybe two weeks ago now. I'm really excited because I feel like it has been a while since I've shot anything just for fun. I think that as creatives and as artists, it's really important to, although we get opportunities to create work for other people, um, sometimes you need to kind of create opportunities for yourself and create work for yourself and rejuvenate your creative juices and whatnot. So I'm really excited to go through these sets of images. There really isn't a title for it. <laughs> it was just more so the vibe we were going for. I had two of my friends, we went through their closets, put together some looks. We were going for like a vintage, I don't know if y'all have heard, remember Beyonce's song, Why Don't You Love Me? Um, it's kind of going with that kind of vibe, um, especially with the payphone here, the telephone. And then we have some portraits that we shot outside, beautiful skyline here that we, we're going to play around today. And then the highlight of wall is really focusing on editing skin tones. So it's really important for me and my work to make sure that people are coming across the way that they naturally look. Um, of course, enhanced with, you know, editing in general, but I don't want anyone to not look like what they look like in real life. And yes. so um, I have some portraits that I've shot and I also be doing some skin editing with some of these portraits as well. So really excited. And that is what we kind of have planned for the day. So quite a bit, we'll get through whatever, whatever photos speak to me the most is what we'll go <laughs> and we'll just kind of rock and roll from there. Yeah, that sounds great. And your work is so stunning, by the way. I just oh, love the you. way you portray people and really make them feel seen clearly. Like everything you're doing is just so amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. Of course. Awesome. So I guess let's go ahead and jump right in. As Anna had mentioned before, we have a lot of different um, new Lightroom 
um, features that have come up. And of course, these features are available not only in Lightroom, but also Lightroom Classic. So whether or not you, whichever app you prefer, I believe you have the opportunity to play around with these features in both of the apps, which I think is really great. I am a Lightroom Classic girl, but I'm forcing myself to move over more to, <laughs> to Lightroom. I've been doing that probably, I feel like that's a change I've made this year, just because I feel like I like to edit across platforms. So like, Mm -hmm. on my desktop I always don't want to carry my hard drive with me so I can edit on my laptop my iPad etc with the um, Lightroom app which is really great so we're gonna go ahead and let me see which photo I'm really feeling first let's start I need with to this. make the switch to Lightroom as well I'm yeah. still stuck in <laughs> classic and it's just classic like it's too is good just, it's too good <laughs> it is too good and it, it's just especially when I started first editing in Lightroom, I just was like, where is everything? Like, I, it just, it doesn't feel right. But yeah, it's um, the ability to edit across whatever devices I have and not always carry my hard drive with me. And it just makes it honestly a lot more enjoyable. It's just kind of, sometimes I'm like, where is this one feature? So if I do <laughs> that today, <laughs> stay patient with me. Yes, I don't blame you at all. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. So we have a number of different photos. I think we'll start with this one because I really love the sky in this shot. So we'll play around with the sky, maybe the color of her blazer and some other things. And then we'll come into some other portraits that we have over here. Um, I want to say the probably the most important thing when it comes to editing skin tones is trying to do as much of it in camera as you can. And so when you're shooting, when you look at all of these portraits, trying to see if you can expose your images correctly, or if you can't, um, I, in some cases, like in this case, I underexpose. So then that way, if I need to pull up the exposure, highlights, whatever else, whites, whatever the case might be, um, then I can do that. So some of these photos were slightly underexposed. I did shoot them with these photos that were inside were shot with a, I think it was a Pro Photo B1 um, strobe light, um, just with a regular softbox on it. And then if you like this image, I would say probably is perfectly exposed. There's not much exposure or changings I would do there. I really love the way her skin looks. Um, and so this will be one of the shots we'll edit as well. But I always try to make sure that before I start shooting, I try to make sure I, you know, have my white pile and set to whatever I wanted to add. It's exposed to whatever I wanted at. And that just kind of creates a little bit less work for me to do later on in post. So if you can get it right in camera, great. If not, of course, that's what Lightroom is for. You can come and always make adjustments where need be. Cool. Um, Sam has a question for you. Yes. Uh, what would you say is the biggest key to successfully capturing different skin tones? Is it the lighting, exposure, camera settings, editing, or combination? Combination. Cool. <laughs> I'd say combination. And the reason why I would say that is because when lighting is key. So I think when you're lighting your subjects, especially when you have subjects of different skin tones, like in this case, um, you want to make mm -hmm. sure that, or even in this case, you'll see that there's three different complexions here. You want to make sure that everyone is properly lit. So I think in this case, I did shoot with natural light. I actually shot this in my garage. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it was from one of my friends. She has a skincare brand. Um, and so what we had decided to do was, um, I just had a white backdrop. Um, the focus obviously is skin. So, and we also didn't want to do high retouching on skin as well, because it's meant to show what people authentically look like as well. So, um, but I wanted everyone to be properly lit. So in this case, I didn't use any extra lighting or strobes. I just was in the garage, the garage door was open and the natural light was coming in and just kind of filling in each of the subjects face. And I really loved how, you know, you have some extra highlight here. You can see here on her cheek, her nose, and that's just where the nightlight naturally fell. Of yeah. course, if I wanted to go in and do some dodging and burning and highlight certain areas, dark in certain areas, I could, but in this shot, I really didn't have to, um, just because I just loved where the lighting naturally fell. So that's the first step is like, you know, making sure it's exposed properly. Um, if you can, of course you can, if, if, you can't expose, I would I try not to overexpose if you can, um, underexpose so that way you can always lift up the shadows, lift up the exposure, whatever else. And then when you get into your editing, I would also say editing is a big component too, because you want to make sure that 
sometimes or a lot of the times there's not like a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I people run into this issue when they're editing with presets. You throw a piece preset on your photo and then it's like, okay, cool, I'm done. And it's like that preset might be good for a certain skin complexion, but not do the same for the other. So one of the ways that I always focus on skin as well would be like coming down to, let's say, um, I would come down to the color mixer or the HSL sliders and go to like color or excuse me, hue, saturation, and luminance. And sometimes I'll focus, especially if you are editing with like um, darker complexions, red and orange are usually really, I feel like in all cases, red, yellow, and orange are usually the colors that are in the skin. Yeah. So I'll have to target and kind of play around with these colors. Um, usually when I get into really in-depth skin editing, I'm doing a lot of that in Photoshop because I can target each person there is new updates in Lightroom that allows you to kind of focus on that too which I think was really great um but I use I think it's called I can't remember the feature in Photoshop that I use so I can't remember that but um just really making sure that you're focusing on each person's skin tone if someone is more of a warmer complexion you don't want to make them look really cool if someone is cool you don't want to warm them up too much you want to just be really mindful that and it's really important I, what I also try to do is reference the initial the original photo while I'm editing too so then that way you can kind of say okay I made her way too warm she's looking a little bit like a oompa loompa like you don't want that <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely say um Sam it's a combination of all three for sure cool um, and so does Lightroom Classic have the new masking features for different people the same as the mobile ver or the regular Lightroom version? Yes. So, okay. yeah. So if you, so I'll give you an example here. So let's go to a photo. Let's do this photo. Okay. So we have two individuals in this photo here. So you'll be able to do this in both Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. Um, if you go over here to the masking tool, and I actually already did this, so I'm just gonna <laughs> delete the mask. <laughs> so that way we don't have anything there and I can show y'all how I did that. So some new features that you'll see in here is that you have um, the select subject, you have the background object. So we'll go over those um, features there, but you'll see here, it automatically detected the people in my photo. So I have all people, if I wanna make edits to both of my subjects, or if I wanna just do personal person one or person two, mm. that's a great opportunity there. Um, I really love that because I think that'll be really great for targeting skin editing too. Um, because you can see here, I have two people of two different complexions here. And I think that they're pretty, as far as the original image, I really like how they were lit. Um, but let's say if I wanted to do something to person one, and instead of I can either edit the entire person or I can pick specific features of the individual as well. So that's another great um update to Lightroom that I really love because I can target a lot more. So a lot of the things that I was going to Photoshop to do, um, I can now do in Lightroom, which I think is really, really great, especially with the AI um, updates and feature. I don't have to go in and mask the whole person. It'll do it for me. Of course, sometimes it might not be perfect. In this case, it's kind of perfect, but... <laughs> <laughs> But if it wasn't, I can always, of course, add or subtract to my mask if I needed to. So let's say yeah. um, I wanted to do, let's say her face and I'll do um, face skin and body skin at the same time, only because um, I want to make edits to her skin altogether. Um, if I wanted to, I could create two separate masks. I'm not going to. I'm going to keep that as one mask. So you can see there now the overlay showing all over her skin. And then if I wanted to now make edits to her skin specifically, I could increase exposure, decrease it. I can play around with the contrast if I wanted to. Increase highlights a little bit. I'm gonna bring up those shadows a bit more, especially in her neck. She probably should have done it more in her body than her face, but that's okay. And sometimes I also just play around with the sliders until I get something I like. like it's not always that I'm going in. I'm like, oh, I 100% know what this is going to look like at the end of the day. Sometimes it's just, oh, like I'm just going to slide from back to forth, back yep. and forth and say, all right, I like that or I don't like that. So it's also part of your eye as well. That's exactly uh, what I do too. And I think it's nice because then if you push something a little too far, maybe you discover a look that you wouldn't have normally thought about. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And so sometimes it's just like allow yourself that freedom to be able to kind of just 
make whatever just create whatever and if you want to erase it you always can like (laughs) there's always the back button or you can just (laughs) reset that part um so don't feel so attached to a specific way of editing I love to especially when I'm editing I really love to let each photo kind of I don't know speak to me (laughs) yeah um and just kind of be like you know what this is what I'm feeling and this is where I go um But of course, and then the other great thing that I really love about, I believe this is a new update as well. You can also, um, there's like a little amount slider for mask as well. So if I felt like it was too much, I could reduce or I wanted it to be more, I could increase the mask as well, which I think is really cool. So let's say, let me make a really like dramatic, very, very bad example. But if I want to decrease it, you can see it's decreasing there. If I want to increase it, obviously that is not correct. That does not look good at all. <laughs> I will not do my good sis like that. So <laughs> That's so good though. I didn't even know about yes. that. And, uh, and what a game changer, because normally you would just adjust your sliders a little mm-hmm. less, but if you did a huge mm-hmm. edit and you have like 15 things that you adjusted and you just want to lower it a little bit, mm-hmm. then that's perfect tool exactly and then i think the other thing and one thing i actually learned yesterday with playing around is that um you can also copy i believe you can also copy mask over and so when you copy sometimes like for me i do a lot of batch editing so if i don't want to do the same edits over and over and over again um i should be able to create a mask copy that mask, paste it to another image. And then if I wanted to re- decrease or increase the amount of that mask on that image, then I could do that with that slider. Super so cool. you can see that it's slightly like there's a slight edit there. I just feel like it's more so in her neck because it w- that's where all the shadows are. I don't want to increase um, any saturation. I will do a little bit of clarity and I'll leave that as is. So then I'm going to go to create new mask. And I could click on people again. And if I want it to go to her, I could, let's say I want it to do her eyebrows. Because I think her, or actually let me do her lips. So then we can see what that looks like. So if I wanted to edit her lips, I would probably say go down here to hue and I can change the hue of her her lips. Obviously, you know, I could be real dramatic, you know, yeah. I, you know, give her a little purple electric lip or I could that actually did a pretty good job right? too, of making it look real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually pretty, pretty shocked by that. If I were... <laughs> that is so clean and so nice. So if I wanted to do that, I could do that. Or I could just kind of increase, um, I could just kind of play around and see where I wanted it to fall. I didn't want to make any edits to her lips, but that's just really cool that I could do that. And it still looks really natural. Um, I'm going to delete that. Oh, not duplicate it. Let me delete it and delete. Let's go back to, so I think for now, I'm going to go to my exposure. I usually, when I'm editing, sometimes I'll play around with the different profiles to see if there's anything that I want to um use or if I do have presets I don't have presets that I've inputted into um Lightroom yet they're all in classic um but Lightroom also does have new adaptive presets which I think is really great as well so if you want it to I believe that the the adaptive portrait sky and subject are all new correct me if I'm wrong but I believe those are all new Mm -hmm. um and so if I want it to let's say enhance the portrait Glamour is an option. Oh, my computer. Okay, there you go. Glamour is an option, which I feel like it just kind of adds a little color to their lips and adds a little kind of like beautify method on her eye on them. There's gritty. I don't like gritty at all. (laughs) It's a bit too much for portraits. I would say maybe if it was like a landscape image or something like that, then gritty would probably great, but probably Mm. not for portraits. (laughs) Yeah. Um, enhancing eyes. I really love this feature because I usually go in and try to whiten eyes a little bit more. So that is really great. Of course, you can do that, that same, you can enhance eyes more by creating mask, create new mask people. And that was another feature in here. If I wanted to do their, the whites of their eyes or their um, pupil, I could also, you know, make some changes of colors there. So if I wanted this to be a little wider, I could increase I don't know if you can see that difference. Okay, if I do something drastic, yeah. you can see that I'm making the wider for eyes a lot brighter. And so that's another option there. Cool. But uh, let's see if there's anything and the teeth whitening, because I'd be 
always whitening everybody's tea because nobody <laughs> wants yeah nobody wants tea that's not white <laughs> you know I know um, so much easier to do it in Lightroom than with the white strips right exactly no absolutely <laughs> I I will 100 tell you because it just makes things so much easier and then same yep. thing darken eyebrows if I wanted to do that so you just have so many options with those presets um and then there's more presets down here as far as adding a pop to your subjects there is this warm pop mm. there is this soft cool soft so you can see that i made the, the subjects very cool in that image i prefer the soft actually there's vibrant with well, us that's, that's a lot i don't like that on the skin but i'm sure if i wanted to decrease that i could let's see yeah i could decrease that if i wanted to um and then there's glow as well which Maybe for another portrait, not for this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I actually really like the way that soft looks. So I'm just going to leave that as is. And I come back here. And then um, what I will do real quickly, I'm just going to come in here. And when I'm doing a lot of my editing, I also do a lot of editing in or skin editing in Photoshop as well. But mm -hmm. I can use the healing brush as well there is a new i'll point this out now i'm not going to use it for skin but there is a new um, content aware brush which is really great for removing people removing unwanted things um so we'll test that out in another image cool i'm just gonna come in and heal a few of these spots for my girl let's see and sometimes i actually prefer this some at times because it's not every day frequency separation like I can't <laughs> sometimes I don't want to do too much I really love the way people's natural skin looks and I, I feel like sometimes if there's a pimple or a blemish that needs to be removed I can just remove that yeah um especially just using the healing brush so it tends to do like a really good job you can see like real quickly I was able to clean up some of those mm. um spots there so I can the makeup started to separate a little bit there. Can I do that there? Let's see. Okay, great. I think my computer's acting a little slow, but we are good. I'm going to come and clean these up a wee bit. Lightroom mm. just makes me want to be able to like add these edits in real life and just yeah, I know. <laughs> look in the mirror. Oh, I need a little touch up here. Yep. A, little here. <laughs> a little right there. Mm -hmm. So it really does but i just love how like quick you could do that like yeah. that didn't take much for me to have to do so if i wanted to now make some general edits to the image i'm going to bring down the exposure a little bit i love to add some contrast to my image because it just makes things pop a little bit more um highlights are fine Let's see and again i just oh, can i click this oh my goodness my mouse okay there we go uh, let's bring down the shadows a little bit and I'll leave that. Sometimes I mess around with the point curve. I'm not going to embarrass myself today, so I'm going to leave that part <laughs> alone because <laughs> sometimes I got it. Sometimes I don't, but you know, know. that's I more so, <laughs> <laughs> but this could be really great again. If I wanted to add, um, like some more reds or blues or cyans yeah. into my photo, I could do that there, especially getting into the color grading of my image. Um, I don't think I want to add any more temperature or warmth. I feel like they are um, pretty kind of warm as they are, like how they look. And then I might come down here to, sometimes I like to add, this. well, not sometimes, this is where I now get into like color grading. I like to come in here and see what I can do to color grade the image. Obviously, of course, you want to be mindful because you can see how it's impact how, the intensity and how whether it'll look good or be a little bit too much. And then I can also increase or decrease there. I don't really want a lot of that. So maybe I'll leave the shadows for. Sh Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. She might just leave it because I'm not sure if I'm okay. Actually, I like that tone there. She really liked that tone there, so I'm gonna keep that there. The highlights. Then go back in. Mm 
That's okay. And then I'm gonna go back up here to uh, where's the mask I did of her? Okay. I'm going to add um what? I feel like I'm like talking to myself as I'm editing. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> it's so relaxing. I was like just getting sucked into it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna do this and do this. What, what do they call it? ASMR? Like- yes, oh, that's a hundred percent what was happening. I was like, ooh, I feel like very relaxed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Maybe you need to do some ASMR editing streams. Maybe, you know what? <laughs> Comment if y'all want that. That might that might, that might be a vibe. I know, right? I always think about that. I'm like, hmm, that would be kind of cool. You know, why not? Why not? Okay, perfect. I think for right now, I'm gonna leave this as is. I would do a little bit more, but you can see that. Oh yeah. Before, and now after. Yeah. And so I... we've. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say I love the green touch that you did. It mm-hmm. definitely gives it like a cool vintage vibe. And that's oof. I love that you said that because that's one thing <laughs> I love to do. I have realized I love the color green. I think it might be. I I used to think it wasn't my favorite color, but I feel like it is. Um, But especially when I'm editing, I feel like it tends to do just that. It adds a vintage look to the image um, that I tend to really, really love. So in this case, I feel that's the vibe of the entire shoot. So why not? Why not go for a vintage look? Um, So I think I'm really satisfied with this image for right now. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And again, you can see that before and that after. Mm. um great so let me go over let's see let's go to this image now so this is another image that was shot and we actually so i was looking for um if y'all are ever looking for a space that you can shoot in that's kind of like new and unique and that like sometimes you don't want to shoot in like a a studio or sometimes some studios will have like certain setups which are really nice mm-hmm. um but i just went on pure space and we were able to find this like really cool oh. vintage um space to just rent out um and so like literally all of these pictures were shot within that space which i think was really really um cool to kind of provide a specific vibe and then like i said before i just had the girls bring whatever they had in their closet because I'm not rolling in the bank like that to be going to the store. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm also not a stylist. So sometimes yep. when you're just doing things like fun for fun like this, you just kind of collaborate with your friends and see what you can kind of quickly um, and easily pull together. Yeah. And that's so you're in Arizona and you found Pure Space there in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so awesome. Pe- I didn't know. I thought it was only in LA. So that's yeah. really good to know. Yeah. I think they have like um, spaces like I want to say really everywhere. Like if you go in Pure Space, they'll give you the option to like search which city and what you're looking for. So I just typed in like photo shoots and then I put Phoenix, Arizona as the place and put like the time I plan on shooting. And then after I did that, it gave me all of these different options for spaces. And like, I don't mm. know, usually like I'm always, I was hesitant to go on the website only because I felt like sometimes it's more, especially here in Phoenix, it's more like <coughs> event spaces or like right. things of that nature, not really like for studios or whatever else. But I was pleasantly surprised that there are a lot of um, new studios, especially in the past couple of months or even the past year or so that have come up in the Phoenix area. Um, that have been really really great so for this photo i really want to play with another masking feature of background now this is exciting to me because sometimes i don't want to um edit the subject i just want to edit the background of the subject especially if i have like a solid color in my background sometimes i want to bring up or play around with the hue the saturation or, or the just overall color of whatever that backdrop is so um i just created a quick mask and you can see how like i'm telling y'all this is this is clean like <laughs> it really is it's amazing i was mm-hmm. blown away by it the other day i was playing with it and even every little hair is perfectly cut exactly out. and that's what is so great and i really love it too because um you can see that like um let me see if i can turn it off okay there we go there her shirt is also like a hue of green so i was worried that like if colors were too similar at all 
that they would start to blend, but it does such a great job in just being able to detect who your subject is apart from their background. And I think that just, again, gives you so much flexibility in your editing because a lot of these things, again, I was doing in Photoshop. I sometimes want to just focus on my subject and just edit their skin and the hue and color of their skin. Or sometimes I just want to edit maybe like the background or whatever else. So I can create those masks so quickly instead of having to take a brush and manually brush mm -hmm. it myself. Um, if anything, if I have to clean it up, fine, but I don't have to do that much there. So I'm going to bring down the shadows a bit. I feel like it adds a bit more depth to the image. Contrast just a tiny bit. Um, let's see those highlights. Yeah. And again, just going back and forth to see what I like, what I don't like. And ooh, I don't want that. Okay. Yeah, I like the, the depth in the background now. And then if I want it to play around with the hue of the green, I could do that as well. I'm really obsessed with like this money green color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I feel like I am trying to speak more wealth into my yes. life. So <laughs> I love it. Manifest it in. Manifest it in. <laughs> so I think we're going to go with this money green um, kind of color. And I think well, I mess with saturation just a little bit. So you can see that mask there. That's the before. And that's the after wow. and so we haven't even richer. so much richer and like we haven't even done anything to her <laughs> the yeah. only thing like you like just just let that sink in for a little bit oh. <laughs> so i really i really again i think if i have to pick what i love the most so far i i just feel like the masking is just so incredible the amount of um freedom that you have and just being able to just a few solid edits is all i made i just i decreased my exposure increased my contrast by a tad bit highlights shadows decreased the blacks because i want it to be really deep um and then i messed with the hue of, of the backdrop and now it's a lot more richer it's giving me that money green that i wanted <laughs> and it's my subject is popping out more which is what i love as well um and then again, if I felt like it was too much, I could decrease it. Um, I don't feel like it's too much. I feel like it was just enough. So I'm gonna put this back to hundred. Um, but you could, <laughs> if it was too much for you, you could adjust it there as well, which I think is really dope. So, and then I think, I believe I can do this. So if I copy, I can, I believe I can copy this mask and let's see if it'll paste over here. Like I expected it to do. Yep. So. It detected the background and it pasted the mask mm -hmm. over here. So that's another great option for you there. Um, mm -hmm. I think in this image, it took in also the flooring, which I think is great because I would also want that um, the effect that I made up here on here. But if I felt like I just wanted to do um, the curtains, I could have clicked the background button, let it do what it wanted to do and select everything. And then I could have came in here and erased um, the flooring just to focus on the curtains and then invert or, you know, vice versa, um, to edit both separately. But I liked how it did that for both aspects. And that again, quick and easy being able to copy edits is so easy because again, when you're editing so many photos, um, you don't want to have to go and do everything precise. And then now I can just say, okay, maybe this is a little bit too dark, or maybe this is not dark enough for this image, depending on how it was, um, how the the photo was lit because you could see here this one is darker is more dark or oh, actually i can reference both photos give me one second you can see this is mm. a lot dark or like more vibrant and this is darker so if i wanted to do this and i believe this is also a new feature as well <laughs> you can and so let me back up real quickly so um one thing that you can do now, I believe, is you can, if you come down to this little kind of window panel thing, you can reference, not only can you reference two photos at the same time, but if I wanted to edit this photo while I'm editing this photo, I could, or edit this photo, and while I'm referencing this photo on the left, mm -hmm. I could do that. So you just want to focus on the photo that you're editing is the photo with the white box on it. If I wanted to click over here, I could switch it to where I'm editing this image. So... That's a really That's, nice feature. Oh, I love it because again, when you're editing multiple photos 
and wanting to have consistency in your photos, sometimes it's really helpful to reference images um, between the two. So then that way um, you're not, you're not having a, a, a collection of images and every image looks different. You want it to look right. cohesive and together as much as you possibly can. Absolutely. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to click on my mask, make sure that's there. Cool. Increase exposures a little bit. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same because again, it was, um, it's a different angle and everything. Lighting was not the, exactly the same, but I still want it to be a little bit more vibrant than what it was. Great. And then in this shot, you can see here that she, um, she's a little bit underexposed and she's kind of orange as well. So I think I'm going to, I'll come back to this image and edit and finish that one as well. But I'm going to come in here and let's see, maybe we'll create a mask of her and just do her face and uh, let's do more so her face for right now. And I'm going to create that mask. I am going to come in here and I think it kind of I'm gonna subtract with a brush and get it off the phone. Is it removing? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, good. It looks like it. I was like, mm, my eyes are deceiving me. Yeah, it is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna come in there a little bit. Um cool. And let's see, I'm going to increase exposure just a tad bit. I'm going to have to do this on her neck too. I should have, actually, let's add a, let's add her neck, her body to that as well. So I believe now, yes. So I just, what I did, so originally I had made a mask of just her face skin. And then I started to, and then I realized that it was kind of, I didn't see her finger that that was probably what it was picking up. But mm. um, I realized that while I was increasing the exposure on her face that I probably want to do that to her neck at the same time as well. So I just yeah. went and I clicked add, um, clicked on person, and then I can now add another feature to that specific mask if I wanted to. If I wanted to create a separate mask, I could do that. But in that case, um, I wanted to edit the two together. So you'll see that it says body skin and face skin um and i also really like that it names each of the masks for you so it kind of keeps track of what you're doing in your edits as you're going yeah, um, that's super helpful mm -hmm. especially because um when i edit in photoshop i'm really big on i don't do this often i'm not as good at it but naming your layers <laughs> yeah <you can> keep... <laughs> oh my god i'm the worst I'm the absolute I'm worst. I'm so bad at it. I think I was editing in live once um, on Adobe Live once, and I was like, I should probably name this so you guys can follow. Because in my head, I'm tracking everything. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> That's the thing is, I feel like I honestly feel like layer naming is for other people, mm -hmm. not for you. It's not for me. <laughs> Mm -mm, it's not for but, me but yeah. if anyone but I think the other great thing as well like if I came back to this image after like you know maybe I decided sometimes like I did this shoot two weeks almost three weeks ago I want to say and sometimes I don't edit right away sometimes you gotta let it I might start editing and then I'll come back yeah. <laughs> excuse me come back like a week later um so it's also cool if you can get in the habit of labeling it'll help you then but to me sometimes I'm like oh I could just figure it out but <laughs> so true yep exactly I know I'm the same way you'll see tomorrow when we do the photoshop screen. yes I'll forget I always forget to name layers and I always forget to save those are exactly. like the two things <laughs> exactly exactly um so yeah so all I'm gonna do you guys can see so I'm gonna put this back to zero so you can see where it was at so her I feel like her skin is underexposed. Um, so I want to lift the exposure just a tad bit just so you can see her more. Um, I'm gonna bring down the contrast a little bit so you can see already the difference there. And of course, still being mindful of her skin. I don't wanna change, I'm not changing like, well here, I don't wanna make her Make that dark actually i'm gonna leave that as zero um in some cases if you wanted to add a little bit more warmth in the skin you could but 
this is where, again, you want to be careful because now she's getting orange and I don't want her to look orange. Um, or I also don't want to remove any warmth from her skin because now she is, um, she's looking more pale, which is not what I want. So you can play around with that a bit more if you would like, but I think I'm, can I grab the slider? Oh my goodness. My mouse is, okay, there we go. This is one of those days that I probably should have been editing with a, do you um, edit with a mouse or do you edit with the tablet? Um, I use a mouse. So yeah, I use a mouse too, but sometimes I'm like, do I need to switch over to, I tried using one of those like tablets, the, what are they called? Um, like the, the Wacom? The Wacom tablets. Yeah. And I tried that and it just, it didn't work for me. <laughs> I know, me either. I have probably had like three Wacoms. I just got an X Pen um, a few weeks ago and I can't get used to it. It just doesn't yeah, work for me. It's and so hard. I've heard you have to like use it consistently consistently mm. for a few weeks without touching your mouse to get used to it. But I don't have that time of time on my Exactly. Hand, you know? Exactly. So I can't I can't do that. I've tried. Um and it's just getting the, the the first thing is just getting used to it like i'm like yeah. thinking i'm editing in one area and then I look at my screen and then i'm just i can't my my motor skill yeah <laughs> not allow me <laughs> exactly i totally agree it's it's like dancing it feels so weird yep, to my body it feels... i'm like it doesn't move like that <laughs> <laughs> exactly i i struggle with that entirely oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's like the old thing of trying to pat your head and rub your stomach mm -hmm. at the same time. That's Not how it me. feels yep, whenever you use a tablet. <laughs> exactly. And I'm just like, sometimes I'm like, I'm wondering how, like, you have to have patience. And that is one thing that I will say that at times I lack. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like yeah. I only have patience when it comes to like editing, but I don't have patience for like new tools Dang. that I'm adding to my workflow. I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm better off just doing it as I um, as I am even exactly. if I know even if I know in the long run it's gonna be better for me if yep. I'm too impatient then it's just like it's uh, it's all right I know and like we've had this conversation before on live streams where we've reached the conclusion of the most important tool is the one that you're comfortable with and oh, the one course. that allows you to work fast and get things done mm -hmm. and be able to express what's in your mind without I, I think that's the problem is sometimes these tools create more of a limitation you know exactly exactly that's exactly it and so just there's no I feel like the important thing oops, I'm referencing another photo okay I think the important thing is that there is no right or wrong way to do anything. There's just whatever your way is. Totally. Um, and so I feel because sometimes people people be like, "Oh, how do you do this?" I'm like, "Well, this is how I do it." But yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you do some research, there's plenty of ways to do the exact same thing. Um, exactly. Just do what works best for you. Okay, so I just came in here and I was just using my healing tool just to heal some of these slumps a wee bit all right so let's look at that before and after of that image so that's the before wow. and oh where the after go there's that after wow so you can see that like it's what just a difference such a huge difference so much life to the image um i would say that as far as her skin goes i would say that like I feel like this is more true to what she was looking like. And I feel like it's also consistent between these two images too. Yeah. Um, I think that like in this image here on the left, I keep doing that. Okay, great. In this image here on the left, I felt like her skin was honestly perfectly exposed. I have, mm -hmm. I don't want to mess with her hue or the color of her skin or of her complexion. Cause I just love the way it looks. But in this image to the right, because I was shooting at a lower angle, um, I did use the same strobe light, but I don't remember if I had it directly on her or how I had it angled. You know, I, I'm new to the strobe world, so I'm just testing all this was just more so to test it out. But you can see that this just wasn't like lit the exact same way, which is perfectly fine. That's why, again, you can make those edits um, in Lightroom. Yeah, and so good being able to compare the photos like this to mm -hmm. really match that skin tone. So exactly. she looks like the same person, same skin across all images. Exactly, exactly. Let's see, what else do I want to do? And if I wanted to, I think for right now, I'm going to leave this image alone. I'm going to go actually 
back to the screen of one photo and let's finish up this image. So I'm gonna, I see some spots that I wanna take out and I'm gonna use the, I feel like I could also technically, I'm, I don't know if I'm necessarily using the content aware tool correctly, but I'm gonna use it for some of those spots <laughs> there. Um, I also, I think this would be really great. I don't think I have any photos um, where I have like, maybe in the distance a, a, a small amount of people in the background or like maybe like a big rock or like if let's say I was shooting outdoors for example let me see if I have a photo here and we'll come back to this image I know I'm jumping around a bit but if I had a photo like here she has I don't know if you all can see that little piece of string mm. that's like dragging there so if I wanted to use the content aware tool that's something that's also new in Lightroom I could go over and it should pick up from this reference from surroundings and oh, yeah clean that up easily and then if I wanted you think to it, do you go think ahead. it would work on the telephone wires I think it let's you know what let's try that I think that would be something to test out like if I were to try to do it like here on her or on the on the let's other see. one like the black wires where's that black wire like um with this oh yeah that could work that i had a black wire in that other shot though didn't i no okay let's try this one because this black wire honestly um frustrated me after i was looking at the photos <laughs> yeah yeah i'd be curious to see if it let's see cleans it up i'm gonna oh <gasps> oh yeah come on oh. Yeah, okay. All right. That's not bad. Okay. That's not bad at all. And let's see if I can just make this brush smaller. Okay. That's Pretty not bad. Good. That is not bad at all. Like, I can yeah, just come and in and just touch it clean up. Yeah, that is not bad at all. So, that actually makes me really happy because the one thing that was frustrating me after I finished shooting was seeing the um that cord yeah being like dang what can i do with like it's it's really sitting there but you can see it cleaned that up yeah. pretty nicely i would go in and just clean it up a little bit more but oh yeah. that's beautiful that is really beautiful yeah that's awesome I wish I could do that in my house. There's some wires that just drive me crazy. I know. Oh. <laughs> Especially, I wish I was, I sometimes I watch uh, different YouTube videos on like how to like tidy up or keep things, like, especially like wire management. Yep. Um, If I look underneath my desk. <laughs> I know, me too. It's so bad. <laughs> underneath my desk, around my computer, there are so many wires. <laughs> Yep. And I'm like, yeah, my wire ma uh, wire management skills are honestly trash. Like it's it's not good at all. I know, me too. <laughs> um yeah. Jimmy said I bet that content aware tool will work well on facial blemish blemishes. That's another thing that I was thinking about, Jimmy, because I wasn't sure if I wanted to test it out here, but it probably would do very very well. So let's just kind of let's play around with it. Let me find another photo. Let's see. Which one? Let's do this one. Just want to come in real quickly. I'm going to zoom in and let's see what that'll do. Because I would imagine if it's picking up from the pixels around the skin, it should. Yep. Do a pretty decent job there. So not only do you have the healing brush tool. And I think this is really nice because of. <coughs> I think I probably want to experiment more with this. But I like this because it's picking up from the texture of her skin. Um, and it's not like smoothing anything out. It's just kind of picking up from another area. So it still mm. looks so incredibly natural. That looks really good. Yeah. So I actually, I've been using the healing tool this whole time, but I think I'm going to start using this, the content aware a bit more on skin. Like that just looks 
I think that, where did that pick up for from? What did that last one reference from? Let's see, can I zoom in? Zoom in a bit more. Okay. I delete that one and do it piece by piece. Yeah. Yeah, that's really natural. Wow. Yeah, that looks that really is, good. That looks really, really good. OMG, I love. I'm here. Actually, I'm going to. I know I just made that mask, but I'm going to delete it because I'm going to just copy the mask from the other image. <sighs> I just, no, that's not the mask I want. I want this one. I still Come am on. blown away that you can copy a mask, put it on a new photo, and then it like reselects that new subject. Like, it, it, do, you, do you see what we just did there? Like, it's that's so crazy. What? Like, nah, I'm sorry. I know. I've and seen some he, things in my life, but wow. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> And even being able to bake that into your preset so that mm -hmm. it applies on every single exactly. image that you have, like, it's so crazy. And it exactly. does it so quickly. It's not even like, oh, let me think about it for the next mm -hmm. 15 minutes and then give you a subject. It's no, instantly. It's instantly. And it's just like, I don't know. That's just so, it's so incredible. I know. That's what I'm like when I saw when I was looking at all the features, just the masking, overall masking, but being able to copy from one photo to the other and it just quickly adapt. No, yeah. that's that's game changer. Adobe, you really did something with that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really did something oh, there. I know. I remember back in the days of like having to paint everything in manually yep. in Photoshop. Yep. And cut things out and uh and so nobody... good being an editor these exactly. days. <laughs> exactly. Like who who wants to do that? Who wants I to know. reference everything? Like uh, I don't want to have it just takes so much time and I think the one thing that's precious to all of us is our time. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that I can now save it with um a bit with my editing now I just think that that's just anything that'll save me time is a game, is a, a winner for me. Absolutely. I'm gonna crop that in a bit more. Yeah, I like that crop. And I like how it's a little bit more dramatic that image is, but that's really beautiful. I am still shook on the content aware on the skin. I know, that looks so good. That looks so beautiful. Cause I've seen people use it for more so like, maybe like, I don't know, like if you're outdoors and there's things you want to remove or whatever else, but to be able to use that in your skin editing. And I think it's just, again, it makes it look really natural. And that's why when I'm editing in, I keep referencing Photoshop, but when I do, a lot of my skin editing happens to be in Photoshop because you do things like frequency separation. And the right. big portion of it is trying to maintain the texture of the skin. You don't want to, when I first started off editing, um, doing skin edits, I felt like I was always smoothing the skin yep. and blurring yep. the skin and it's yep. like no <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I know I look back on old edits where I destructively edited skin and mm -hmm. it's just like a blurred mess exactly and it's like nope doesn't look good you still want to yep. maintain the color of the skin or the texture of the skin excuse me um and making sure it still looks like a real person <laughs> yep yep exactly I remember getting reamed out in my internship. I just like brushed the skin in and smoothed it. And they were like, um, <laughs> this is not going to work. No, it's like, <laughs> no I'm, I'm not with that. Yep. And that was when I decided to start doing fantasy instead of uh, oh. instead of people. Because I'm like, clearly I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, sometimes the, things are a blessing in disguise. Now you found your totally. the, the, the lane that works for you now. Totally. <laughs> Oh yep. my goodness. But now you guys can see. Let me go back to not that photo. Where is it at? Okay, I'm referencing two different photos now. Okay, and then let me click over here and reference this one. Perfect. I feel like, again, keeping your edits consistent um, 
And and then just being able, I think I think I also really love being able to reference, and not only just reference the two, but because I think you were able to do that in the past where you could reference two photos right. or multiple photos at the same time. But being able to edit while you're referencing is a game changer as well, because now again, <clears throat> I don't have to like, okay, here's the, here are the two photos. Okay, let me go back to the one photo and edit, and you know, be going back and forth between those two um, screen features. So now you can do everything collectively at once, which is really nice. Yeah. All right, so I feel like um, I'm going to come back to these. I wanted to also show one more masking that I think is really, really great. Um, there is an, op an option to mask objects as well. So let's say you have um, certain objects in your photo that you want to, you know, do specific edits on just the object itself you can do that with the new masking feature. So if I click on, if I go to mask and click there and create new mask, I'm gonna click on objects. So now it's gonna give me the option to take my brush and you don't have to be precise. You don't have to like, you know, I'll get every single detail, but just kind of go over whatever that object is. I wonder if it's going to let me add to it. Yeah, it should. Mm. So it should. And then if I want wow. to add. So yeah, you can see how it basically picked up the object completely. Nice. And so then now if I want it to come in and this um, little radio thing is a little dusty. I forgot to. I didn't realize it was dusty in real life. So ignore that, please. <laughs> or if you didn't see the dust, maybe you didn't see it and I brought your eyes to it. Yeah, I could not <laughs> see that at all. <laughs> um, but again, if I wanted to just edit the object in the photo, I could do that. So let's say if I wanted to, you know, make it more contrasty, bring up the highlights in it or whatever else, this could be really great for editing any objects that you have in your images. Um, and again, the whole purpose and point being that you can just really target, you can do more targeting. And I think that's just really great for flexibility in your editing and just kind of creates, like in a few seconds, I was able to just edit the, the little radio speaker thing without having to spend too much time trying to mask and get things done perfectly. Of course, if I needed to go and add or subtract to the mask, I could, but I didn't need to do so. And that's in this case, you can see that, bam, I just wanted to increase the exposure or decrease the exposure, contrast, bring up the shadows, and I added a little bit of warmth. And you see that small difference right there. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Fairy wants to know what's the difference between editorial photos and fashion photos? That is a good question. I feel yeah. like. I feel like people use them um, interchangeably. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like when people are talking about editorial, it's usually like that high fashion type of look. Um, I feel like also like editorial for me is like more of like a commercial look as well. So, right. you know, so instead of just like, oh, I don't know how to really describe it, but I feel like w with this shoot, it was very, it feels more commercial like. Like I feel like I could be in Kohl's and see yeah. this this image hanged up somewhere because it's like bringing, um, like you see like the really cute and, and dainty photo of the, of the girl in the image that's kind of really nice to look at, but also like I'm looking at her jacket. I'm like, oh my goodness, where's that jacket? Like, where do I need to go right. in the store <laughs> right, to buy right. that jacket? <laughs> yes. So I feel exactly. like it's creating a scene that kind of, especially when you're looking at editorial fashion, you're sometimes, I feel like also like in the two, cause fashion could just be like high fashion. It's not meant to sell you anything. It's just, you know, high fashion. But I feel like when it's also more editorial, I feel like if this was for a clothing brand, I feel like this would be able with how she's posed is bringing attention to the detail of the jacket. Um, and that's really what catches your eye in this image. I feel like I could, see this photo be like oh where's that jacket and not want to buy it so i feel like it just kind of maybe depends on the the space you're referring to but i think in general it's like editorial fashion i feel like can be used interchangeably um and then i would say as well like more so in that commercial space as well as being editorial too right yeah i think that's a really good answer um and then jimmy wants to know how well does the copy mask feature 
uh, work on a second photo that is darker or lighter in exposure. Ooh, let's see. Okay, so let's find a photo that is darker in exposure. So, okay, these ones are quite similar. So do you mean more so if I were to create a mask and expose her properly, let's see if it'll copy those exposures over to another image that's also dark? I guess maybe maybe if it's so let's see copy over to a second photo that's darker lighter in exposure so maybe if you did the mask uh the subject mask on mm -hmm. this picture because it's darker and then went back to maybe like your image during the day with the blue sky oh. if it would still pick up the mask just as well let's see okay so let's do yeah, i'm gonna create a mask i'm gonna go down here to people again do i want to do, i can also create a subject mask if i wanted to do the entire nope i'm going to do people because i don't want to uh, do everything <laughs> all at once so i'm going to delete that mask and create a new mask and i think the other thing sometimes what i would also do in that situation is a lot of the times i'm focused on editing if i'm copying mask over i'm usually going to copy mask over it in a collection of photos that were in the same setting um just right. because the lighting and everything would be so extremely different different so if there was another image that was in the same setting but maybe was exposed differently then i would do that opposed to you know if something was completely um different as far as light like especially light, this is more so using a strobe light and then you know we'll see what it looks like outdoors and how that picks up there um, cause it'd be nice to see if it's still able to detect the subject. Um, yeah. Yeah. And Jimmy, let us know if that's what you were referring to, or if I got that totally wrong. <laughs> um, I feel like I did something wrong. And Fairy asks, I'm curious why some editorial photos like Vogue, for example, still are using film for their photos. I would say that's a style choice. That's a style choice. Yeah, I would agree with that. I feel like that's especially I feel like recently film has yeah. been everyone's thing. Like it's yep. been the go to the go to um, style of choice currently. Totally. See, so I'm gonna copy this mask. I just made some slight edits, and actually, did it? Uh, so actually, let me do that again. So even in this image, I made some just quick edits. So if I copy this mask, which again, this was just <coughs> excuse me, a mask of her face and body. If I come over to this image and paste that same mask. Okay, so we see that, that it carried the same, and these should be the exact same. 24, 8, 15, 15. Yeah, it should be the exact same settings that I carried over. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to make any adjustments there, I could. But if I came to like this image of her outdoors and press that and pasted it you can see that it's gonna just carry it'll still select it seems like it's still it kind of caught her clothing in this mask in the face and body mask as well so i probably again would do it in a separate mask for this photo um instead of copying from another to this image and maybe if right. i were to let's say do a, a individual mask for this image now and copy it to let's say this portrait that's also in the same setting i'm wondering maybe it will detect or copy that mask over a bit more a bit better there um let's see there's actually one more i wanted to do yeah so jim jimmy said yep for when sometimes when your subject moves away from the light and into darker mm -hmm. areas areas on a later photo in the day so yeah. yeah i think no matter what i think um the adobe ai is going to be able to pick up your subject mm -hmm. exactly you just might have to adjust those settings absolutely so let's see i feel like have i even completed a photo i feel like i've been hopping from image to image <laughs> to image but i've not actually completed an image 
<laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of what other um, features I want to display if I haven't already. I think I went through like the new, there's some adaptive presets in here that y'all can play around with. So let's just kind of go back to the ones that I've started editing and let's complete some photos. <laughs> cool. Sounds good. <laughs> Um, perfect. So with this photo, I believe the only thing we really did was change the mess. So this was again, a completely raw image. I had not done nothing to the image. I just had changed the background and that already made such a dramatic difference on the image there, which I really love. I think for the most part, I'm going to keep everything else the same. Actually, no, I'm going to do some edits to her specifically because I don't want to, um, mess with the exposure of everything else right now. So people do the entire person. Do I want to do anything here? Oh, contrast a bit. I love to add me some contrast. Yes. Keep the dark and the black stuff, or the shadows white. I'm going to keep that as is too. I'm going to grab some more water while you keep working on that one. I'll yes. be right back. <clears throat> of course. I'm going to give you guys some more ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. All right. So I like the way that looks. Don't want to mess with the saturation of really anything. I like the color of her shirt. I like her skin. So I'm going to go back to my editing. I actually might come here to, um, let's see, let's whiten her teeth. Not too much. That's looking a little fake. Can I reduce that? Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to come back over here. And I think the last thing that I would do on this image would be more so color grading. So let's come down to our color grading wheels, um, my favorite part of Lightroom, honestly, and see what we can play around here with. Let's see. Really like, again, I just, there's something about adding greens to, um, your highlight just slightly that just makes it very vintagey looking which i love let's see yeah i'm gonna keep that on that side all right and then we are sharpening a little bit geometry i'm not gonna do anything there um do i want to do anything else to this image i think i already cropped it so just to go back to recap, the first thing I did was crop the image because there was a little bit of open space over here that I didn't want to capture. Then I went into creating a mask where I masked the background. And you can see here that is the before and after of the mask. And I feel like that probably is the biggest game changer of this image. I did do a mask on her slightly. Um, and then I also did add... Um, a little preset for her teeth just to brighten that a bit. I actually, I'm going to go back to presets and add the, it should create a different mask for her. Where's the eyes? Enhanced eyes. Yeah, I like that too. So when you're adding these adaptive presets, it's going to create a mask for you. So then again, if I felt like I wanted to enhance her eyes more, I could do that with increasing exposure, changing these settings. So this is what the preset is automatically set to. But of course, with presets, the great thing is that you can adjust where need be um, to kind of have a bit more control with your image. I did not come on here and do anything to the lighting portion of the overall photo just because I felt like I targeted everything that I wanted to target that I didn't need to make any general overall edits. Um, the only edits that I felt like I made that y'all saw me do just now was the color grading, just adding a little bit of this orange to the shadows um, and then a bit of that green again for that vintage feel into the um, highlights. Sometimes I'll do midterms 
oftentimes not <laughs> um i haven't found like the sweet spots yet with midtones but depending on the image sometimes i'll play around with that as well so there's cool. that option too and let's go ahead and see that is your before and that is wow. your after wow. so i feel like it's very it's giving editorial it's giving vogue you know <laughs> totally i know it's amazing because you just did some little minor tweaks to everything and it just really amplifies the yep. whole image yep and that's what, and that's what it's all about i feel like it's i'm actually gonna export this image because actually also I'll, I'll come back to doing that i need to create a new folder for that uh, for this set of images <laughs> but yeah i feel like you know, sometimes I don't want to do too much. Um, sometimes I just, and I, again, the quicker you can be, especially with editing a set of images, the better. Um, just because I love to edit, but sometimes I don't want to be sitting on my butt <laughs> yep. Yep. for hours upon hours. Um, and so it kind of gives you, um, again, it didn't, we didn't, it didn't take much, just a couple of edits to some targeted areas. Mm -hmm. And now we have literally a night and day photo um which i think is really really great there so we have finished that shot i am gonna come over to so i'm good on that one i think there was the other one that we had did was this photo was this one yes this was one so let me just quickly finish this one. What I didn't do to this image, we did the same thing, creating the mask for the background, mask for the subject. Um, I haven't done any kind of color grading, so I'm going to see if I can add the same kind of, again, the orangey and a little bit of that green. Yeah, and then again, before, after. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. Like night Beautiful. and freaking day. We love it. Yeah. The lighting uh, on her face looks so much better. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so, um, and that's a great part. You don't always have to worry about getting things correct. Um, you know, when you're shooting, you obviously want to do as much as you can, but sometimes I'm just like, you know what, if the lighting was trash, as long as, especially if it's underexposed, then I have a lot more freedom to be able to just boost it up as much as I can to get the the, per, the preferred lighting for my image. Definitely. And then um, okay. Jimmy asks if you can save XMPs after editing this way. Ooh. Is that I, like the mobile preset I, file? I, I think forget. so. I think it is. I do not know yeah. that answer, Jimmy. That is a very good question. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure either because that would be a really If anyone in the there. chat knows the answer to that, please let us know. Please, please do let us know. Okay, so those were the three. I do want to come to some of these sky photos because I just feel like we can do something really dope with the sky. Um, yeah. So let's, let's do this photo here. And I'm also interested to play with the content aware because... Um, these were like the little telephone or the, the wires and the, and I do kind of want to get rid of those. So where am I going to start? So let's start with our healing or using the content aware and just kind of see what that looks like. I'm going to move this zoom over here. Beautiful. All right. Let's see if this is, this works. Okay. So slightly. Yep. There we go nice and sometimes i just like to do it piece by piece i find that like it's probably more accurate instead of me doing like i mean maybe not if i did like this full chunk at once pretty accurate and i can just yeah, kind of go in and good. clean it yeah pretty good actually perfect so i'm gonna go back and i'm just gonna do that piece by piece Okay. Um, Jimmy also asked, can you sync or copy the color grading from the original shot to another shot you want graded? Yes. I, yes, that you would can be do that preset, right? Or yes. I think you can also, yeah, you can do that through a preset, but, um, if I go, because if I press copy, it's copying editing settings. How do you, 
trying to remember how you copy and you can choose what settings. Um, I think if you right click on the image um, mm. or click on like the image in the timeline below. Then yeah, then you go to develop. Where does it say develop? My eyes are deceiving me. I know, me too. Oh, choose edits to sit. Um, edit settings okay, to copy. Yeah. Beautiful. So they change that. Yeah. Yes. So, um, Jimmy. So, if you wanted to, so a lot of what you've all you guys have been seeing me doing is um, copying over, like specifically, the um, the masking. Um, here, it's not including the mask. If I were to do this, so if I were just, so if I was in, let me go back. If I was in, I was copying mask. That's how I've been just copying, pasting the mask throughout the image. If I wanted a general copy of the entire image i could um just like we found out here right click go to choose edit <laughs> settings to copy you'll see here that masking is not added i can click on that and then it will take my masking with me but you'll see here it's it'll take my lighting the color grading that i did any effects or any effects um i wouldn't i usually don't include cropping i probably wouldn't include healing just because um that's usually more specific to each photo. I don't want to heal, copy a healing and then it's like all over the place. So that's probably the yeah. only thing um, that I wouldn't copy over. But I would say that masking because of the AI feature that it's pretty accurate that if you were to copy that over as we've seen that it'll be able to detect where the body, face, skin, whatever it is that you were um, masking in that original image. All right, so let's come back here go back to content aware and come on pick it up pick it up pick it up yeah that's what i like to see <laughs> that's that beauty that's see come on it don't get no better than that <laughs> so good <laughs> love it absolutely love it so now i just felt like it was just too distracted i want to focus like do you see how dang near perfect like that's literally perfect it looks uh -huh. so good you would never even know it was there nah see adobe don't play with me like you give me these tools i'm gonna use them <laughs> <laughs> exactly oh love it okay perfect so sometimes again i just like to do it if i'm if i'm healing or in this case using the content aware tool i'd like to do it in pieces just because um this is where i have to you know take a bit more of my patience <laughs> but i just feel like it, it's a, it could end up being a bit more accurate that way let's see Did this one even pick up no i didn't necessarily pick up anything okay let's All right okay cool i can work with that Great. And then let's come in here. And all right. So a little, I could go in and make that a little bit cleaner, but we're not going to do that today. But you can see those lines are gone. Ah, looks so good. So we're going to go back here. All right, so now that they're gone, I'm gonna go into my masking. In this case, um, I'm gonna select, actually, well, it's a sky, so let's select the sky. And it should detect everything beautiful. And we're gonna work on the sky here. Now, one thing that I love to do with my skies um, is play around with the color. Um, I just feel like, why not? Who needs like a blue sky? Like sometimes I really loved teal. You see how that just like pops a lot more. Um, so especially when you're taking into consider, I think what I really loved about this photo and what I was trying to do in a lot of the shoot was use um, color is really important, not only when you're editing, but it's also important you know, beforehand, you know, color can play a part in the location that you put, you pick color can play a part in the outfits that you choose for your subject as well. Um, and the images that you all saw before, um, 
you'll see that she was wearing in her clothing green and pink those are complementary colors which is they just look so beautiful together same thing with i believe yellow and blue um and so just being able to pick colors that by the eye just looks so good together can kind of help help to enhance your images as well so i think that's probably one thing that was became a game changer for me in my photography was like once i started to focus on color it was like oh that's i feel like i cracked the code <laughs> so definitely play around with color as much if you can um i love again the way that this yellow now stands out against this teal um it just so this was you know this was cool but now it's like, mm, it's giving more, it's more vibrant, more editorial, more in your face, <laughs> which is Absolutely. what I love. It looks so good. I was like, yes. And then I was muted. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoops. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Um, that is so funny. Um, okay. So again, select people. I don't think I want to do the administration. Just do some slight edits of the entirety of her. And I probably won't do anything to exposure, but I will do this with a contrast a bit. I'm gonna bring those highlights down so a little bit so you can see a bit more of that yellow in her clothing. Bring up the shadows, yeah. Okay. And then let's create a new mask. Let's see. I'm going to select person again. And let's do the entire person again, but I'm going to remove. I want to target just her jacket. So I'm going to subtract from her. Let's see how quickly this will subtract from her skin. Uh, honestly, I could also just, let's not even do that. I could also do that in HS, when I get to the HSL slider. So I will do that later. Um, let's see. I'm going to go and create, so I'm going to delete this mask because I don't need this. Create one more mask for her skin and face. And let's just do some slight... No, don't want that zero. I want to add a little warmth there, just a tad bit of warmth. And yep, I think that looks good. Now I'm going to come down to my hue, saturation, and luminance. Let's go ahead and see what we can do to that yellow. Okay, so it's not, not seeing anything in her skin that's bothering me. So that's fine there. And then color. Way. that's easier to see those sliders okay oh i'm on reds that's not where i want it to be i want to be on yellow yeah so i'm gonna make that yellow a bit brighter or change the hue a little bit and then i like the saturation so that it's just it pops a bit more so again our before wow. and our after like Totally huh? gives it that editorial look. Yes. So much better. Yes. And then again, you can see how, again, just trying to maintain skin. So I'm not making her look anymore. Cause this is again, this is how, this is her natural complexion. She's more, um, I wouldn't say, I feel like she's more, she's cooler. Um, she wasn't, she's not too warm in her skin. So I also don't want to make her look, um, I'm trying to be careful of of that in her skin. I don't want her to look too warm. And then if I wanted to, sometimes I come down and I add a little, depending on the image, if I wanted to, I, I could add a little bit of red because I can see that, that makes her skin pop a little bit more there. And then if I wanted to play around with, and sometimes it helps to just see what it looks like so dramatic and then just yeah. pull back. It's really fun you know? sometimes. Exactly. Just just play around. You never know what you're going to see. <laughs> exactly. I feel like that's like the the biggest thing of today. Like just 
just play around you never know what you're gonna navigate towards and this makes me really happy because like i didn't edit i told myself i'm not gonna edit these photos beforehand we're just gonna get on live and just do what it do like <laughs> yes. sometimes that's best because you can overthink it if you know exactly oh, what you're gonna do of course of course I and i too. yep and i didn't want to overthink it so i was just like okay hey, let me just um let me just kind of allow myself to feel a little bit more free for sure and that way nothing looks okay i'm cleaning that cleaning some of this content aware up with the healing tool because i want to kind of fix that a little bit um jimmy asks how do the transitions look when you mask the background and adjust the mask um or then and adjust the mask and subject then adjust afterwards uh often there are subtle halos between the two when you do this in photoshop mm. is lightroom better i would say definitely Lightroom yeah takes care of that I would say that as well because sometimes like you said like with the masking like you want to be like if I were let me go back to my mask like sometimes there can be that halo effect that if I did a little bit too well, actually I need to be on a mask um I think again you can just target certain areas to where you're kind of avoiding that overall halo look on your subject uh, between your subject and your background for show sure. okay so I think I love the way that this looks. So again, before, after. That looks so amazing. Come on. Love. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I'm going to go ahead and just out of, I want to see, I'm going to copy these edits. Um, profile, crop, no crop. I'll do masking and I'll leave healing alone. And then let's paste it on this one because this photo is actually underexposed. So I'm just interested in what that'll look like. Mm, that looks good too. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And I just picked up the, there you go. And then I just, so it copied my mask over. And all I needed to do was pick up the exposure for the overall image. And then I'm going to come in here, take my content aware, content aware tool and just come for these black wires. Come on. Why didn't you pick, why didn't you go away? Oh, maybe it's picking up from somewhere else, that's why. Okay, great. Mm -mm, let's try, I don't know why it's not picking. Here. It's like leaving like a little purple. I'm gonna try healing. Do you see that? Yeah, that's really strange. Where did it's, that come uh, from? Uh, hmm. Opacity's all the way up. Did I do something? <laughs> <laughs> that is so weird. Why is it making it purple? Did I? Opacity's up, so I'm like confused at why it's purple. Huh. Maybe the feathering? No? That shouldn't make it that that's, way. That's no. really weird. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it worked for the last photo. <laughs> yeah, unless it's still picking up something yep. from that last photo because yeah. the settings are copied. I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, let's try the clone stamp tool. Yeah, even the clone stamp tool is... It might be picking up something from the past... The past yeah, that settings. Is so weird. That is the only thing I can think of because I'm like, why would you be doing that? Uh, I think. Oh, it's getting this, part of the this, background. Th mask. Yeah. There we go. Huh. And then you could just brush that out. Yeah, actually, you're right. So let me go and subtract and. Brush and then brush that out. Like, let's see if that. Huh. Oh, maybe it needs to be added. Add 
subtract. Oh, maybe add. Yeah, actually. Sometimes I get so confused with add <laughs> and subtract and like, and then intersecting this. Like, yeah, that's... it just is all. Okay, there we go. Now that's cool. taking that out. Yeah. So that's Beautiful. probably like a good, yes, good thing that's to good do. To is... know. Yeah, maybe like heal it first and, and then, then do the yep. color. Okay, that's actually really good to know. Because I was like, oh, my eyes are not deceiving me, right? Like, that I, know. Is... <laughs> I was thinking that, you know, when you look at something bright and then you look away and you yep. still see yep. like that. I was thinking that's what was happening. And I was like, why am I seeing purple? <laughs> yep. And then I'll have to come back in and clean up the... Because you can see now, like, some of that original blue is peeking through. But what, like you said, I would have done... I would have um, done the healing first and then, yeah, it's just better to do the healing first and then go ahead and mess with the, yeah. the color mask. So we'll leave that for now, you know, in this photo. And then, but again, you can see that before. Wow. And that after. At least wow. I put that color. So I absolutely love this image. I think it's just so... I think I prefer the, her eyes closed. Yeah. That one's really cool. It feels like super mm -hmm. powerful. And the lighting, it's like she is the sun. Mm -hmm. So sweet. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I, I really love like sky shots like this. Like if there's a way, like in this case, all I really did was I got down low because um, I just had her standing and the sky was beautiful on this day. And I love it when the sky looks like it looks fake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. So when you can really see the clouds and it's not just like, oh, like, you know, just blue. You see the 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 white is really popping in the clouds. And I really love this because it's not a backdrop I created. It's a backdrop that existed. And I just, you know, captured it with my subject. So I think for this shot, I had her stand here. I really liked, I tried to, when posing my subjects, try to create some kind of like, angles with their hand their hands and their arms if need be so i liked how like you have a triangle here triangle here with their arms um i find that if you depending of course on the image and if it's appropriate i like when my subjects close their eyes because it just feels a lot more passionate and mm. it brings you more into the photo yes. um so i think that is really stunning in this image here and then again Focusing on color, the blue and the yellow, that color combination there just pops so, so well. Um, so yeah, I love this shot. And all I had to do was get low. I think I might've been sitting on the floor <laughs> or either sitting or just squatting really low, angling my camera up to just get her and the background because you could see here, like we also had, this was shot in the same area. There was this building here. And so just to make sure I wouldn't get it, I just make sure, made sure to angle it a bit more. Mm. Um, so sometimes you can you can get different looks in your photos based off of the location that you're shooting in as well. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so let's see. I've done a lot of this set. Let's go to this image. So this shot, I'm gonna go ahead and reset it, and it's gonna look very different from the final image y'all i don't even remember what it looks like <laughs> um completely can i where's my reset photo button there we go reset edits so that wow. is the original oh my god <laughs> oh my god yeah yeah <laughs> that was the original photo now i edited this photo now over two years ago Oh, wow. So I think sometimes it's really cool to um, edit photos again, you know, to see if your styles change because that final image that you saw was what it was two years ago. Um, I do still have actually, yeah, I have it here just to reference if I want to in case like I get stuck. <laughs> um, but let's just go ahead and see what we can do here. And this will be really great again for targeting skin um, with three different subjects that have three different complexions. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with cropping. So I think in this image, I really wanted it to have 
let's see how did i crop it not to make it exact but i know i cropped a bit of her face out to really focus on my subjects i'm gonna bring this in i think i cropped a little bit of her eye out and then brought this up a bit more yeah and i'll bring that crop down a little bit I could definitely Beautiful. see this image on like a big makeup poster in a store. Thank like, you. So good. <laughs> you know, one of the, the goals I have is to, um, I would love to shoot. Um, I need to start shooting more beauty photography. Mm. Um, the reason, ooh, reason being, I like when I go into Sephora, this, there's nothing better than when I go into Sephora and I see um images of just the the beauty photos that are in the store yes and so this was my first time shooting like skin and i really mm. wanted to like how can i like what what would i want to see walking yeah. into the store yeah i think this would be such a powerful image because i just mm -hmm. love that they all have different tones of skin mm -hmm. and then they're all looking at the camera and it's like kind of this play of the eyes moving up through the piece mm -hmm. and but then you also see their lips following like almost the same direction yeah. just a little zigzag and mm -hmm. really really cool yeah i i love it i love it and i um i think when it came to posing because and the other thing is like sometimes when it, I, i'm looking for inspiration with posing i do also go um online go on pinterest online um whether that's instagram pinterest because i think this was like a i had seen a similar pose on pinterest and mm -hmm. i was like okay i want to i love like the the placement of heads so i had to i didn't have them laying down on their backs they were laying on their sides as you could see in the original photo yeah oh uh, so it's just kind of like trying to place their heads and then i was like tilting everyone's head a certain way um but I really love how the crop came out or how the, the overall image came out in the end. It just felt very yeah. like, it it's just so felt really great. beautiful. It's so great too, because it doesn't look awkward. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. when you have people lay their heads in a way that maybe isn't as comfortable and like stacking it can like that, it can look tight. And it yep. just, it looks like so soft and like they are having this nice moment together. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Feels very and um, what's the the word I always love to use? Intimate. Yes. <laughs> it feels yes. very very intimate. Absolutely. Um, so of course sometimes I'll come and do I want to do standard or no? I think I'll do. No, I'll keep it on color. So sometimes I'll change the color profile. Um, I'm gonna go over here to presets and see what this looks like. So there's pop. Nope. Ooh, I do like warm pot. Mm, that warm too. pot is beautiful. Yeah, warm pop it is. And then if I wanted to increase or decrease, I think this was another great update. This came, I think the option to like have an amount slider was like one of the previous updates um, to Lightroom. And it's just, again, having that, that freedom and flexibility because some things might work better for different photos. And so being able to decide how much the amount that you want for each photo is really important. Yeah. Gonna bring down the exposure just a tad bit. Contrast. And then again, let's just look at that before and after. Wow. So I just love, I really love that preset because I just feel like it brings out a lot of the details in their skin more, but doesn't look like, you know um it doesn't look like like overly done i don't know yeah. i just feel like i could like her freckles the eyes everything just feels very very beautiful yeah um okay so i'm gonna come down here and increase warm just a tad bit not too much okay so i'm gonna go ahead and come to my masking and let's see, this is the only thing I wonder if it's going to be able to detect that there are three different people. Yeah, I was wondering if it was going to be able to detect that only because they're so close to each other. Yeah, so it only sees the one it's, person. It, sees, it only sees one person. But again, I think that's fine in the sense that, so let's see, so what does it do? Oh, it gets all oh. of their faces and all of them. So yeah, it thinks it's all one person. That's so weird though. Wow. Because there's multiple eyes. You would think that. Yeah. That would... No, it's like, 
Yeah, I'm wondering. So that's a, another good thing to know of is like how you, if you're thinking about how you're going to edit these photos, the photos that you're shooting, I guess like it's really, it could be important to focus on the placement of your subjects. Like if you're fine, like for this image, I probably will have to now go in if I wanted to edit each individual person, I would go in and have to clean up the mask to focus and create yeah. a mask for each person. Um, just because they're just so close in proximity <laughs> that it just looks like it's just one person <laughs> right but i think for this part i'm not gonna go ahead and do that because that's a lot of time um i think for this image again when it came to three different skin tones it's just how how you you have it lit like i think that they both like they each of their skin tones look really really nice and clean in the initial photo and then i'm just kind of being careful with my edits moving forward. And I also think they're all very, I mean, I would say that one is more, that one was definitely more warm than I would, a lot warmer than I would go editing nowadays. Let's see. I actually really liked more to that green. And then if I want to come in, I'm not going to do any kind of healing I'm gonna leave that as is. Let's see. Okay, so I don't want to mess with the hue. I'm gonna go to luminance and bring the luminance. And be careful with that because of her lips. And again, sometimes I'm just going back and forth with what I see. You can see this orange is impacting all of them. So I don't want to do too much there. Just going to increase it slightly. Saturation a little bit. I don't want to do anything with luminance. Can I click on luminance is the first question. Yeah, I'm going to bring that luminance down because I feel like it just deepens their tones a little bit more. And then see that before and after and I think what I like about this one compared to this one is definitely I think I added must have gone in and added a done some color grading in there mm. which um I think for the purpose of like it being more of a creative photo I would do but for a skincare brand I probably would have refrained from that well I don't know let's see Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Don't do anything to my highlights. Not really. Okay, that looks really nice. I'm gonna mess with my blending. See how those three blend together. And I think that's really. Do I want to change anything up here? I don't want to add any other color. No, I think I really love this as it is. So you can see that before. Wow. And that after. Wow, that and, is crazy. And that didn't take really, I feel like I did that in all of, I don't know, like. <laughs> like less than five minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so sometimes it's just like, I, I, I feel like a lot of it is just, making sure that your subjects are properly lit you know a lot of the time if you if you have sun on on, on both of your subjects especially well depending on the lighting that you're, you're using but if you are lighting your subjects properly I think that that goes a long way when it comes to your photo editing because they'll show up as they they truly are um and in some cases if you feel like especially if you have two people of two major like maybe someone who's like maybe a lot lighter someone's darker maybe underexposing and then later going into because you also don't want to overexpose for the lighter person and then now the other individual is um they're overexposed so I tend to underexpose and then later on you can kind of pick up um you know and pick up the exposure shadows whatever else and then in some cases I would if I in this case, I didn't have to, but if I needed to, let's say my overall edits made someone look a little bit too orange or some, I needed to impact the exposure of one person, then I would have done some more masking and just focus on each individual person. Um, but I think in this shot, we kind of were able to get away with it there. 
Definitely. Yeah. I can't believe how, how much more amazing that looks. I'm <laughs> like, that was such a simple edit too. It was, and it's like just yeah. really bringing out their skin tones yeah. and even the texture a little in the faces yes. like, gives it so much more power. Yeah. And I feel like it just feels so like, it feels so tangible too. Yeah. Um, totally. Which is what I love with that texture in their skin. I feel like it feels like she's here like she it feels like she's here like I could yes. touch her <laughs> yes um and, yep I think that makes it even more powerful for like a skincare poster mm-hmm. um because I would definitely look at that and be like oh I want to buy that because she looks real she has like mm-hmm. that glow in her face she has still the real skin texture looks mm-hmm. like you could reach out and touch her as you said mm-hmm. yeah and sometimes and sometimes it's nice to like I, I think it also depends on like if it also, of course, depends on what you're shooting for, but definitely like this being a skincare brand, I want it to have that feeling. Yeah. I don't want to go in and um, especially, I, f- I don't like it when, I, f- I mean, I'm, I'm not a retoucher for a skincare brand, so I couldn't tell you how people do it, but I feel like you want things to feel real. Um, yeah. And I don't want to go in and smooth out anything in their faces. I don't want it to look like, oh, they were overly edited because that's not the this is supposed to skin like this is meant to be no makeup raw this is what i look like and you want that raw feeling um obviously like in different setting like in other photos i wanted to clean it up i wanted it to be a little bit more cleaner so depending on the space that you are the, the space your photo is going in and what you're editing that photo for you'll, you'll target those edits differently like i'm probably for this shot not gonna go and pick the content aware tool and try to cl- click out all of these different blemishes because I feel like that is authentically who she is in this shot. And I, I want to keep all of that, all of, all of that detail. Yes. I love it. So good. Yes. And then we had, this was one more that I had did a while ago. So I know we have a couple of minutes left. So I like, what, like 10 minutes? Yeah. Minutes? Like 10 minutes left. All right. Let's go ahead. And I think I covered, is there anything I missed? Let's see. I think I went over the, we used some of the adaptive presets. We talked a lot about masking, um, masking your background, people, subject, objects. And yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to reset this photo and we can keep. So again, look at this. So that was what I did a year ago. And that's another thing, again, like sometimes I just like to revisit a photo and just see what does it, do I, is my, has my editing style changed at all? Or is it, is it ideally the same? Yeah. Sometimes you never know. I'll be right back again. So sorry. No problem. (laughs) No problem. So I'm going to go into presets. I really liked that warm pop and I feel like it's going to be good for me here. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of the work for me, y'all, was done in this warm pop, with this warm pop um, preset. Like that alone, before and after, yeah, that alone, I would have just been like, that's that's enough. <laughs> so that is, I'm gonna bring up that exposure slightly, contrast just a tad bit, a little bit too much actually and highlights nah i think she's already lit really nicely Mm -mm -mm. i'm gonna come down here i'm gonna add a tiny bit of warmth just a little bit and then i'm gonna come to here and see what we can do i feel like usually when i'm adding to my shadows i'm adding a little bit of yellow or orange just for that warmth then my highlights could depend and this because I kind of I don't want to make her too pink but I kind of like that or actually maybe I'm going towards that yellow again yeah more AAMS or ASMR yeah <laughs> <laughs> more of that y'all let's see yep so yeah, I I'm that that uh, that um pop I, what what was the name of the preset I just used? I used it again. That warm pop preset is 
beautiful. Like that really did a lot of the work for me. <laughs> yeah, that looks incredible. Oh, love it, love it, love it. And again, I'm not gonna go in and do any healing or anything that sort. I just really love how how she looks in this image. I might come in and let's see. I've not played around with darkened brows, so that's cool. In case I wanted to do that texture here. It's really picking up only her edges, but I do actually like that it adds a little bit more texture texture there. And then lastly, enhance the eyes, increase that slightly. And then those should all be individual masks. Yep. So you got eyes, hair, and eyebrow. I like that there's um, different ways to do everything. So you can either target the eyes, hair, or eyebrow with the... Um, people, um, people mask, or you can just do it with that preset as well. And that preset kind of picked up a, yeah, I picked up those eyebrows really well. Great. Mm. Question for you from Jimmy as we wrap yes. things up here. Um, what is your favorite new feature that you're looking forward to adding to your normal workflow? Um, I feel like I have a couple now. <laughs> I will definitely say I think the number one favorite feature would definitely be the, all of the masking. So when I, the, the masking people, I think that is probably my favorite, um, that and masking background. I just love that you're able to now separate your subject from your background and make edits and because there's some case in this case I wouldn't do it just because that it was the background was white um but in that photo that we had talked about over here I just loved how I felt like there was a like hold on if I take off that mask you can see how much different that photo is mm. without that yeah. mask on the background so I feel like that is different diff absolutely stunning so I would say in general just all of the masking features because you can target so much more in your image a lot of the things that I would go over into Photoshop and say okay I want to just edit the background I just want to edit her skin I just want to edit her clothing I can now have the freedom and luxury to do that in Lightroom and honestly save more time um, because it's doing a lot of the work for me. So I would say that is my favorite feature. Um, the one that surprised me the most is definitely the content aware. Yes. I would say that, especially on skin. Um, I don't know if that was intended, <laughs> but using that content aware on skin, as we saw on one of these images over here, I think it was this image, her skin still looks like even zooming in, it is still so beautiful and you can see that difference there and it and it still looks so natural it's not blurring it's not it's just again it's it's maintaining that texture in all of her skin so I think that is the feature that probably surprised me the most um so yeah I would say those two and then I think you utilizing some of those adaptive presets um I feel like I usually in a lot of my editing tend to sometimes people ask me for presets and I'm like so a lot of the times I just find a lot of joy in just editing each photo for themselves, but yes. presets do save you a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So I do have some of my own presets, but as we saw with this portrait here, these two, um, I use the adaptive preset or one of the adaptive presets, the warm pop. And I felt like that was really, really stunning for this photo. Um, and I love, like, I honestly prefer this edit to the edit that I did two years ago. So you can see, like, I think there's a little bit of a... Um, there's a slight difference between the two, but I just feel again, in these cases, utilizing that warm pop was really, really beautiful. Um, but yeah, overall masking and the content aware for sure. Amazing. Yeah, it's really cool to sometimes take advantage of those baked in presets that mm -hmm. are already set to go that are in the program and not even having to make your own. Exactly. And then just using that and doing your own adjustments on each photo. I, exactly. I do agree with you. Um, 
editing each photo sometimes is so much more fun than just yeah. applying a preset. It is. It is. And then like when you find something that you like, then it's like, I can make a preset out of that yes. and use it on everything else. So you can, you can kind of, you know, it can be as complex or as easy as you want it to be, which I, again, I just love all of the flexibility and freedom that you have as creatives because I think we need that. Some, sometimes I want to be, I don't want to be as creative. There's some shoots that I do that I'm like, I just need to apply the same preset on everything and send it to the client and just be yeah. done. Yep. And then there's shoots where I'm like, I want to play around and I want to see if my editing styles change, what colors do I like? Um, and then create a preset out of that that you can use in certain situations. So um, I think it's just really nice to give yourself that freedom and flexibility for sure. A hundred percent. I could not agree more. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. This of has course. been really fun. And um, where can everyone find your work? So y'all can find my work on my website, idaraekpo.com. You can also follow me on Instagram. If you have an Instagram, it is, oh yeah, it's ID. Um, same thing as, I think I have, a, I don't, I really use TikTok. I need to be using it more, but it's same <laughs> on there. Um, but then you guys also follow my Behance as well. I'm starting to post a lot more on my Behance. So I'll be sharing some of these final images there um, and on my Instagram later today or tomorrow. So definitely awesome. check me out there. Yeah, that sounds great. And thank you, Sam, for putting those links in the chat Yay. so that we can check you out. Um, be sure to come back tomorrow where I will be the guest and mm -hmm. and you will be my host. Yes. So that will be super fun. We're going to switch it up a little bit yes. and uh, stick around for the Illustrator Creative Challenge with Claudie coming up next, followed by the Creative Challenge with Isabel and where she will show you how to create a coffee table book for a tattoo artist. So thank you so much, everyone for joining us on Behance and YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you tomorrow for day two. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.